What up, my fellas? If you're watching this, well, you probably have nothing, no interest about anything else really on my channel other than the food reviews. Uh, if there's any place where I should go that's in Arizona where I should eat some chicken tenders and review them, let me know. <clears throat> so today we're talking about the sun, specifically more or less not really about the sun, it's actually more about the NBA in general. Because obviously there's this new in-season tournament, and I know it's like the hype. I mean, everyone's so excited about it. You know, it's the biggest thing since, since, uh, uh, since your mom. And, like, I don't know. Okay, realistically, I don't know if anyone actually cares. Okay, I don't know if actually, it's like, literally, I don't think anyone actually cares, but, like, when it comes to the sun side of things, it's like, why are all, the, it's just oddly coincidental that all these in-season tournament type of games are happening when there's something else happening within our team, like, Booker coming back, or or the whole Beal is out for three weeks, so now he'll be on the sidelines and it's starting today, or, oh, and by the way, here comes DeAndre and then and all that stuff. It's like, oh, okay. But literally no one cares about the in-season tournament. Like, every other storyline is anything else but the in-season tournament. I have a solution. You want people to watch... Adam Silver, are you watching this? Probably not. Anyone that actually follows the NBA or works for the NBA, um, who probably has like an acorn up there for for a brain, um, especially Adam Silver, uh, just out of touch, I guess. Even with his with his fans, and it seems like with the with the people that he actually like is supposed to support, which would be the players, it's like. I don't want to sit, put the in-season tournament on a spigot, you know. I feel like, and roast it completely, but so far from what I understand, we all hope it's gone, other than the fact that the court looks cool. And I'm sure the jerseys are cool, like, duh. Like, yeah, it's neat. It's like, it gives more color, you know, stands out, which is, I guess, kind of the point. But you really want to stand out, I give you something that it will stand out. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? So, instead of an 82 game schedule, let's just go ahead and go with a 72 game schedule. Maybe a 70 game schedule. Take away 12 games. And this is what you're going to do when, when you want the most eyeballs on the start of the regular season, early on, here's what you do. You, t you take a 12-team tournament. I think it's like 12-team. 12 12-team, 12 maybe 14-team. Maybe I don't know what, like, the actual parameters. 14-team, 7 teams, 7 teams from the West, 7 teams from the East. The best teams, like, record-wise, from last year... At the end of the regular season, the best records, you just go down the list, right? At the be very beginning of the season, you keep in mind, this is a 70-game season, right? Or even a 68-game season, I don't know. Um, 70-game season, I don't know what number you would come up with. But you want to take away some games. For the right to be in the playoffs, and we're talking about the top seven teams from each conference in this early season tournament. But the right to be in the playoffs and completely miss ten games. Like, sit out ten games. Like, a whole, like, two weeks or three weeks, basically, of basketball. <laughs> like, just completely sit, on, sit out. Maybe ten, maybe, okay, maybe not ten. Maybe five games. For the right to miss five games be locked into the playoffs out of the top you know in a March Madness style one you know one win you move on lose and you go home tournament the top 
And I want to say, I want to say, like, like 14 is 14. Like, 14 is a good, like, field, right? Out of the best 14 teams from last year, which I'm assuming that at this point, you know, at the starting point of the season after the playoffs is over, some of these teams that are number seven from last year probably are. My guess is they're probably a little bit better, right? And you don't want to go anywhere below seven because I know, like, the wild card, you can get, like, a nine seed or, you know what I mean? Like, you know, where does the wild card? It's, it's, it really, well, it's really a wild card, but you know what I'm trying to say, right? Like, like we want to see, you know, so, like, this year it would have been, it would have been, uh, it would have been the Nuggets, Golden State, the Suns, the Clippers, the Lakers, and then, I don't know, name a sixth team, shoot, maybe the Jazz, I don't know, I don't even remember, you know what I'm saying, literally just based off who was, the record wise, from the the top, the best record, all the way down to the, like, seventh best record, and then it would be, like, on the Eastern Conference side, it would be teams like the Bucks, and you know, but it would be like a random, you know, playoff, like, teams from the Eastern Conference and teams from the Western Conference would have a chance to play each other. It wouldn't just be teams from the Western Conference playing teams from the Western Conference and then meeting up, right? It'd be like just like a random, either, I don't know, maybe it would be a seeded thing. Maybe it could be a seeded thing if you want to do it, just like March Madness, you'd go, the team of the the lowest record from last year would face off against the team from the best with the best record from last year, and then you'd tier it that way. So then you would have the number seven team facing off against number one, and then the number two team facing off against the number six, and then the number three team facing off against the number five, and then the four team. But I guess. Face the full. I, I I don't know exactly how it would work. They would figure. I think it'd be just fun to be random, because I think honestly, like in college basketball, it matters. I don't. I just realized I don't know why I'm doing the video vertically. I guess I could do it horizontally. Who cares? Uh, yeah, in college basketball, it matters. But I just realized in the NBA, it doesn't really matter. The team that's seventh and the team that's first, like. This is the NBA. Teams will go tank down to like seventh seed in the playoffs or sixth seed in the playoffs. Like, you know, and then go on a run, you know, in the playoffs anyway, because again, this is the NBA. You sit guys, but if you play a tournament in the very beginning of the season, you want to get eyes on the very beginning of the season. Hello. And do a March Madness style tournament in the very beginning of the season, like day one. Season doesn't even start yet. Do a March Madness style tournament, and this is for the rights to pretty much no matter what your record. Like unless you're unless you go unless something terrible, drastic, horrible happens, and. They lose, I don't know, like, 15 games below, like, unless they're, like, like, more than a certain amount, 50, maybe 15 is too much, like, like, out of the playoffs, right? Like, unless they're, I said, like, what, below five out of the playoffs, they're automatically in with 10 games or five games where they don't have to, they don't have to play. They don't have to play the rest of the the rest of the season, like, like the last few games of the season, because they're already in, no matter what. Um, and they're locked in at whatever seed. It, they're locked in. The team that wins this early season tournament, March Madness style, would be locked in on whatever seed that they finished before, you know, before the five game rest period or the ten game, probably not ten game. I feel like ten games too much for me. Seven game rest period. 
you know, a little bit more than five, but not quite ten. So, like, two week, three week, but not quite a month, I don't know, like, two weeks, but not quite a month, rest period, whatever. That would be motivation. That would be, <laughs> you want to get guys motivated early in the regular season to play some really good basketball March Madness style tournament with the top seven from the Eastern Conference, top seven in the Western Conference. You mix them all together. Teams from the Eastern Conference play teams from the Western Conference. You get to see like, like how good these teams actually are and how good the best teams actually are and how maybe how underwhelming some of the best teams actually are. Right, you know, the Clippers, and then you like you get to see like really what these teams are actually about, right? And then you give them the ultimate motivate motivation of one being locked into the C that they're at in the playoffs a lot earlier, locked into the playoffs a lot earlier. I mean, this would be like the winner of the whole tournament, like no second place, no third place, nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? And number two, the ultimate motivation, and not just money, extra financial incentive going to the winners of the team, because that's pretty much all it is, is extra financial incentive, and no one really cares, right? Um, but number two, getting the sit games and getting the rest while everyone, every other team has to play more games. <laughs> now that, now that's something I'd pay to see. Now that is something that I would show up to see. Like, that is a must-see event, right? That's just my opinion. That's my take. If you want to go ahead and uh, go ahead and uh, bring me up to the, uh, uh, the board of directors in the NBA or whatever, uh, whoever is uh, putting forth these uh, uh, terrible ideas like the regular season tournament and you want to hype up a, a uh, March Madness style 14 team tournament. What's up? I'm here. Let's talk about it. Shorten the season. Start the season with a big March Madness style tournament from teams that were in the playoffs year prior seems pretty good to me I don't see any flaws here maybe there is flaws but I don't see one neutral court like you know the whole thing would be played on like one or two courts I don't know if like where you'd get like two courts in close proximity I guess you know I guess somewhere, like, probably somewhere in, like, Texas. Say you play in, like, Houston, and you get, like, you know... Like, it, it, well, I guess I guess that would be, like, one thing. It's like, you would probably do... It would be, like, neutral site, but then you would have to have, like, multiple... But it would work. It would work. It's the NBA. Like, it's not college. It's like, <laughs> like, it's like, if they can get it to work in college, where, like, teams can go from cross teams can go across the country and to play like the next day if they have to then you can do that at ba too for uh you know the but actually play actual playoff implications on the line and the motivation of not having the not even having to play 10 games or seven games, like just sitting down, taking a seat for two weeks while the regular season's still going on. I mean, it kind of sounds like a really good idea to me, you know. That's just my thought.